Okay. Yes, it's me, T. Look at DM. So a lot of stuff has been happening. Um, I'm, I'm in New York right now, actually. Um, I'm not at any of my people's place right now. I'm not with my fraternity brother. I'm actually in the um, Chelsea area at a hot, you know, um, you know um, a, a hostel, whatever you know, a, a, you know, the thing that travelers go. And this is like the old days when they had the, what they call the SRO, single residence, single residence occupancy hotel. So it's a little, I have a little room, a piece of bed. There's a sink in there. Then they have a common bathroom, a common, common, a little common toilet. So anyway, um, if you hear air conditioning because we're down here in, in, in the lounge here, charging my phone that I picked up right before I left, you know, it's sort of a weird cheap smartphone because I wanted to wait for. Like I had to get my, uh, probably get a, um, a One Plus. I'll see what happens. But that's much later because I don't have a whole lot of money. I gotta wait for the next month. My next, you know how it goes. Um, anyway, so I, I actually extended my trip here, my, my time here in New York, because I have been traveling two days and I was really. Um, um, so I'm actually going to be here another day. My sister doesn't. Nobody knows yet. You know, I just did this this morning. You know, I wake up early. I work about six o'clock, five thirty. Actually, I walk to the train station, change everything around. Um, of course, I'm down here on Twentieth Street, so the train station's at Thirty Fourth Street. See? So it all works out. I could have went to a hostel up there on the Upper West Side, but this was the better one, and it works out well. Not that expensive, cheap actually. Um, so I was talking about the air conditioning. I know it's still a little stuffy. Um, um, now we're in the States, there's going to be a lot of air conditioning. I'm not going to my sister's house, it's going to be all oh over my gosh, because they put up the air conditioning, so I'll figure something out. Anyway, uh, so um, do, I'm, I'm staying an extra day. Why am I staying an extra day? Good question. I'm going to ask that same question to that. Don't you want to see your grand niece? Don't you want to uh, check out your, you know, blah, 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 blah. But what am I looking for here? Um, remember I told you when you travel, also always have a, a photo, color photo copy of your thing as a case. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that's my thing. Where's my, where's this at? Where's my, gosh, man, where am I? Didn't I put it in here? Oh, here it is. <laughs> when I came in, you know, on the fourth, fourth of July, this is the fifth, um, I went immediately to the, um, the, the uh, we, we call it the African Street Festival. They, they call it the African Market. Well, they call it the, uh, uh, well, this is the 40th. Wow. 40th? 40th? 30th anniversary Symposium? 40th day? I've been going to African Street Festival maybe for like 30 of the 40 years. I don't know. Um, this is good. Anyway, uh, so when I was looking at the program, I didn't pay attention. Then I realized on the back, they, the 30, they have symposiums. You know, they started 10 years after they started. And on the symposium, for the symposium is when it's going to be the Saturday. That's tomorrow. And uh, But I was looking at the program. You know, they have a um, registration, how welcome, blah, blah, blah. Uh, films and discussions, Jewish Larry, uh, Walter Rodney. So we're going to talk about Jewish Larry and Walter Rodney. That's good. So we know African Jewish Larry is African, of course. Walter uh, Rodney has from the Caribbean. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we have blacks and immigration. Ooh, interesting. Uh, uh, and then a thing called uh, the Congo. That's really deep. So we're talking about they're going to talk about that. Political prisoners, um, Africans in Palestine. Uh, so what will probably happen from 11:20 to 1:30? I can take a break because I'm not doing political prisoners and I'm not doing Africans in pa uh, Palestine. Hello, before they come back, this is tomorrow Saturday. Arts and culture, the art and poly stuff. Gil Scott Heron. I shoot Gil Scott Heron's head. Did I tell you he put a prank on me one time? I never get into that. Um, so, uh, by um, Bilal Suni Ali is going to be speaking, and Gia Scott Heron. So, is Gia Scott Heron, is that his daughter? I don't know. I'll have to find out. Uh, left at 3 o'clock, reflections on the East. Um, so, uh, interesting, I guess. Um, uh, 3.15 in the afternoon. This, this is the last panel of the day. This is why I had to stay, right? The New Front Line, good title. Uh, reparations, land and returning citizens. Reparations, comma, land and returning citizens. So that is why I had to stay. I have to, you know, I just gotta be there for that. And uh, so that's it. Hey, look at that. Senior citizens, uh, the mission is $20, um, adults, oh, $15 for seniors and students, you know. So that's why I had to stay, right? But just one thing I did want to tell you about while I have your attention here, I'm sort of stable. Um, this book here, in black and white, the untold story of Joe Lewis and Jesse Owens, right, uh, Donald McRae, this book right here. 
This was given to the gift to me last year on my birthday by uh, Caroline. Caroline, you know, you don't know Caroline. Caroline from Kenya, because you know I go to University of Florida. Hey, I know I go to University of Florida. There's a lot of international students. So Caroline, who works in the international office, she gifted me this book, right? And that was last year. So this year when I was traveling, I just, oh, let me pick this up, because I always travel with a book. And, and then I looked at the note that she had sent last year, and it says, Happy birthday, Brother, Smith, Brother Anthony. I always, uh, uh, I always, something to, I always something to visit old bookshops. Oh, uh, she always likes to visit book, do, um, um, uh, used bookstores. So, uh, and so she had picked this up. So obviously, she thought of it. And then she signs it, uh, uh, a white chicken. Uh, it's not the white chicken or the uh, chicken. Anyway, we did a, we did an audio drama she was a part of. We did an audio drama called The, Re the Revenge of the Chickens. Maybe I'll find that, put the link there. It's a who, right? And you know, my audio drops, we had no rehearsals. Well, we had little rehearsals. No rehearsals, actually. We just go. Because we have fun. So that's what she's referring to at the end of that. So this book is heavy. Let me just, I just wanted to, um, I just finished reading something. This is a sort of enter entertaining part. Um, and it's about, you know, it's about, you see, Joe Lewis and Jesse almost was born uh, like a uh, two years, but very close together. They both came from Alabama. They both had, you know, the whole thing. There's a whole racial, you know, this is like the 30s, like the late 30s, the 30s into the 40s, right? It's the 30s. But uh, I just want to think that we just, because it was funny to me, uh, that, that how the newspaper, people were, were reporting, um, they were talking about uh, Joe Lewis at the time. I'm not going to go that, because this is funny. Right? Um, it, it was easy for whites to see Owens, to about Jesse Owens, as that soft haze. Lewis had to escape Johnson's shadow. Talking about Jack Johnson, the boxer. You know, Jack, he's very flamboyant, blah, blah, you know, hanging, you know, having the white girls, just, just flaunt, just doing his thing. He's the first black champion. He was just, he's just a character, right? Okay. The break from Papa Jack, that's what the, that's what the boxer people call him, Papa Jack being Jack Johnson, uh, would be irrevocable. Uh, um, Roxborough, uh, so, oh, by, by the way, I should say, well, I can do this. Roxborough was suggested by the seven rules they laid down for Lewis, okay? <laughs> now, it's very important to understand. This was the first time in boxing that the entourage, uh, Joe Lewis's entourage, was all black. Okay, usually they had entourage, they had what do you call that, um, gangsters or something, the entourage, oh, people are coming. So maybe I won't continue this, but you know, keep going. But we'll see what happens. <clears throat> anyway, so it's the first thing we had an all black entourage. Now, this is very important. Remember, this is a lot, a lot of, back then, the uh, fights are controlled by gangsters, you know, because we're coming out of the 30s where the gangsters got their, their power from, you know, from the bootlegging, you know what I mean? And so they, they, they fix fights, whatever happened. Now, he's, um, uh, um, Joe Lewis is about to fight this guy. But let me leave that part out right. Anyway, um, they were invited up to the cotton club by the guy that owned the cotton club, his monster killer, whatever, killed, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he tried to, you know, muscle in. So he said something to them, right? Like these black guys. But when they left that meeting, because that guy wanted in on, you know, that's not a monster, in on that cut, what, what, one of the guys in the entourage, one of the black guys, was owed a favor by a mob guy, right? So as soon as he, he called that favor, like Detroit, whatever it is, that guy called this, you know, the guy that owned the cotton club, the monster owned the cotton club, and that was, they, they no longer had to deal with that, let's put it that way. So what I'm trying, I guess what I learned from that, that look, if you have an entourage, if you're gonna have these entourage, you have to have all stratas in your entourage. Here you have your doctor, here you have your lawyer, here you have your accountant. You've got to have somebody also in that world that things come from, that, that, that thing comes from. Okay, they're gonna make a lot of us. This is early in the morning, I forgot what time it is. Uh, well, now it's so early now, it's almost eight o'clock. Here's what they were called, Joe, and here's the seven rules for Joe Lewis, right? Remember, this is uh, reacting to Jack Johnson. Joe Lewis will never have a picture taken alongside a white woman, right? He will never go into a nightclub alone, right? There will be no soft fights. There will be no fixed fights. He will never gloat over a fallen opponent, right? He will keep deadpan, this is in quotes, in quotes, right, in front of the camera, right? That's why Joe Lewis, you always see him a certain classy, then I smile and whatever, okay? And finally, he will, he will live and fight clean. Okay, remember, this is reacting to, to the former champ, who the, the big guy with Joe Lewis or Papa, Papa, Joe, Papa Joe. So it's, it's very important. Now, I look at these rules, I'm going like, hey, some sports people, and some 
entertainers these days? Maybe they should revisit that, okay? I have no idea. I being me, T from the past is taking a train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect from, uh, from whoever you are, from New York City, Manhattan.